So that's elements. For elements, the molar mass is the mass of one mole of atoms. What about compounds? Most of the things we deal with are compounds, not elements. The molar mass is the mass of one mole of molecules, or for ionic compounds, formula units of, of that compound. So whatever the formula is, at the beginning of lecture today, I showed you how to find the formula mass, right? The mass of one formula unit. So we're going to do the very same thing, but when we're doing a mole, then the unit just changes to gram. So we convert between the mass of a compound and moles of the compound, and then we can calculate the number of molecules or formula units from the moles. So the molar mass of a compound in grams is the same number as the formula mass of the compound in atomic mass units. And just as a reminder, the formula mass is the sum of all the atomic masses. So let's um, calculate the formula mass of calcium nitrate. So this is the formula for calcium nitrate. This is an ionic compound. It doesn't have molecules. There's one calcium and two nitrogens and six oxygen atoms in this formula unit. So if we want the mass of the formula unit, we have one calcium times 40.08 atomic mass units. We don't use grams because grams are way too big for this little tiny piece of matter. We have two nitrogens and we have three oxygens, no, six oxygens. So when we take our calculator, we've got one times 40.08 plus 2 times 14.01 plus 6 times 16 equals 164.1 atomic mass units. So we learned to do that in section 5.11. You take the mass of each of the pieces and you add them up together. Yes? Why isn't it N2O6? That's a good question. NO3 is a polyatomic ion, nitrate, that acts as a unit. And so what we do instead of um, just giving, well, okay, there's two nitrogen atoms and six oxygen atoms, we know that they're going to stick together in clusters. And so we put parentheses around them and put the number outside because it makes it clearer to the reader what we're talking about. Good question. So that's the, the formula mass, the mass of the formula unit. The other question is, what's the molar mass? What's the mass of one mole of this? Well, we actually don't have to do the calculation, but let's do it anyway. So in one mole of, of this compound, how many moles of calcium are there? There's one. There's one mole of calcium. So one mole of calcium, and calcium weighs 40.08 grams per mole. And in this compound, there are two moles of nitrogen. So two moles of nitrogen, and nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole. And there are six moles of oxygen, and oxygen is 16 grams per mole. Those mole units all cancel out. You can do that on your calculator. You're going to come up with 164.1 grams. Any questions?
The number is the same, only the unit changes. We use atomic mass units when we're talking about individual particles, and we use grams when we're talking about moles of particles. But the number's the same. Yes? Do you want to do a workout like that, or if you find 1.4.1a, can you just put G? That's a good question. Do, do I want you to write it all out like this? Um, I don't think that's necessary. What I do, and I would encourage you to do this, this is, you know, I'll put it in a different color. Um, this is what I would do or, and recommend that you do. 1 times 40.08 plus 2 times 14.01 plus 6 times 16. And you come up with 146.1. The unit is going to depend on, are you talking about a mole or are you talking about a formula unit? Yeah. I knew that. Yeah, there we go. I'm taking cough medicine and it makes my head a little funny. So there in the red, that is the work that you should show when you're calculating a molar mass. Okay. Any other questions? Right. The atomic, the, the formula mass and the molar mass of a compound are the same number, just the unit is different. And if that is like messing with your brain, we're, we've been talking about atomic mass units, and they're, they're kind of important, but really <coughs> we use grams. Um, atomic mass units are not that useful, except when you're talking about theoretical stuff. So if that whole gram atomic mass unit thing is bothering you, just, just forget the atomic mass units and stick with the grams. That's like the cheater get by past the class thing. Okay. Um, how many moles in a 22.5 gram sample of dry ice? Dry ice is solid CO2. Well, we're given one number. We've got 22.5 grams, and um, it kind of matters grams of what? Grams of CO2. We want to find moles of CO2. Can we convert directly between grams and moles? Yes, we can. We can go grams to moles for compounds just like we did for elements. So 22.5 grams of CO2. We're just going to have one conversion factor in here. It's going to have moles on the top and grams on the bottom because we want the units to cancel out. They didn't give us a conversion vector because we have a periodic table and we're supposed to be able to figure this out. So what we need here is the mass of one mole of this compound, CO2. We've got the formula. So down here I'm going to calculate the molar mass of CO2. I, I like to write the formula down because um, then I don't get it wrong. There's one carbon, and we look on the periodic table, and the mass of carbon is 12.01. And there's two oxygens, and they are each 16. And we add those up, and we end up with 44.01. What we're looking for here is the relationship between grams and moles. This mass is the mass in atomic mass units of one molecule, but that's not what we're interested in. 44.01 grams is equal to one mole of carbon dioxide. You can also write it this way, 44.01 grams per mole. Whatever makes more sense to you. 
So, one mole of carbon dioxide weighs 44.01 grams. So I've got 22.5 divided by 44.01. I'm going to need three significant figures. So I'm, as I'm writing this down, 5, 1, 1, I'm going to write down a couple extras. And that's going to be moles of CO2. Now I'm going to go back and round that to the right number of significant figures. And that's my final answer. Any questions? Calculating molar masses is a very important skill. Using molar masses to convert between moles and grams, very important skill. Calculate the number of moles of NO2 in 1.18 grams of NO2. <coughs> Well, again, there, you know, there's a lot of words in here. There's only one number. It's got to be where we're starting with, what we're starting with. 1.18 grams of NO2. And then what are we trying to get to? <coughs> Calculate the number of moles. So we want moles of NO2. We can convert between grams and moles in one step. 1.18 grams of NO2. We just have one factor here. We're going to have moles on the top and grams on the bottom. And our units cancel out nicely. Where do we get the numbers for that conversion factor? We need to use the periodic table, and we need to use the formula for the compound. So here we've got NO2. That tells us what to do with the numbers that we find on the periodic table. There is one mole of nitrogen in a mole of this compound. One mole of nitrogen weighs 14.01 grams. There are two moles of oxygen, and each mole of oxygen weighs 16 grams. So 14.01 plus 2 times 16. 46.01 grams of NO2 is equal to one mole. Now, it's also true that 46.01, that's not a zero, atomic mass units of NO2 equals um, one formula unit. There's no, there's no good abbreviation for that one of NO2. But that's not going to be helpful to us in this problem. So we got this number here. That's the number of grams. So that goes here with the unit gram. And one mole. 1.18 divided by 46.01 grams. I'm thinking about sig figs as I'm writing this down. Here I've got three sig figs. Here I've got four. I need to keep three. Those leading zeros don't count. I'm going to write down a couple extras. And the unit should be moles. Now I'm going to round 0 0.0256 moles of NO2. Any questions? How many water molecules are in a sample of water with a mass of 3.64 grams? So this one's a little different, isn't it? We've been doing moles and grams, and this one's molecules. Well, let's just write down the number, 3.64 grams of water. And this time we want to know molecules of water. Do we know the mass in grams? 
of a molecule of water. We could figure out the mass in atomic mass units, but that's not grams. Or we could figure out the mass in grams of one mole, right? So what we need to do is put mole in here as our middle unit. We can go from grams to moles, and then because we know Avogadro's number, we can go from moles to numbers of molecules. You okay with that? It's, it's the same as going to atoms. Yep. Molecules and atoms are both individual particles of matter. So it's really the same. So this many grams of water, and I'm going to go to moles, and then I'm going to go to molecules. See, this is what I don't understand. Mole is a short unit, M-O-L-E, four letters. It has an abbreviation. Molecules is a long word. There's no abbreviation for molecules. Stupid. But, you know, you just... You can only buck the system so far. So there we go, their units. So we've got this factor I need and this factor. It doesn't matter which one you find the, the numbers for first. This one might be easier because number of particles, number of molecules to number of moles, that's just Avogadro's number. I don't have to calculate anything. One mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's like you can have a dozen people, or you could have a dozen families, right? It's the same number, it's just that family is a group of people, and individuals are individual people. Then for... Um, Grams to moles, we need the molar mass again. So for H2O, we've got 2 times 1.008 plus 1 times 16. And that gives us 18.02. Grams of water equals 1 mole of water. So 1 mole, 18.02 grams. 3.64 divided by 18.02 times Avogadro's number. And again, this is going to end up with three significant figures. Um, 1.2164 times 10 to the 23rd. And when I round that, I get 1.22 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Did I do it right? That's, yeah. So I did the math right, but I got the word wrong. Sheesh. It's, it's molecules. I don't like writing that word. It's too long. Good, good point. Thank you. Now, is that a reasonable number? <laughs> that's a huge number, right? But 3.4 grams of water, that's visible. So we would expect that it would have a ginormous number of atoms. If you ever do a calculation where you get less than one atom, you did something wrong. You can't have part of an atom. That would be like calculating the average family size and saying that it's 0.25 people in the average family. Not possible. <laughs>